Okay, lesson 3.1, graphing quadratic functions. First off, we have to, we're going to use uh, vertical lines a bunch. So make sure you are understanding that vertical lines x equals 4 here, right? x equals a number. This is going to be for our axis of symmetry on our graph. Standard form of a quadratic equation. So... If they want you, this is the parent function, right? I have graphed here. Y equals x squared. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. We looked at this in the transformation section, but this is the standard form. Well, it's really this. Ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to be dealing with these, and we're going to graph these. This low point or high point depending on what it is is the vertex axis of symmetry here cuts right down the middle the graph itself is called a parabola so the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola it has a vertex it has an axis of symmetry because of the symmetry we are equidistant here we're two units away from the axis two units away one unit away one unit away all of these points are split in half by the axis of symmetry. If A is negative, A is negative, we have a maximum, we have a high point. If A is positive, we have a minimum. And we saw that when we did transformations as well. The domain of, the, of all of these parabolas is negative infinity to infinity negative infinity to infinity the range will be dependent on what the whether we have a maximum or minimum notice we go all the way down and we come up in this case to four so and we can be four in this case we start at zero and we go up forever Okay, we're going to find all of these things for each and every one of these graphs. This is what you're going to find every time. When I have the vertex here, this is really nice. I have a vertex at negative 2, negative 3. There's my vertex. Notice I have a minimum here because A would have to be positive. I have a minimum at negative 2, negative 3. The axis of symmetry is always going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex. x equals negative 2. y-intercept for this one happens to be 1 or 0, 1. I'll write it as an ordered pair. That's fine. Notice my, my, I, my symmetry says I'm 2 away from the axis, so I'm 2 away from the axis there. That's one way we're going to graph these. Domain for all of these are all real numbers. In the range now, I have a low value. The range will always come from, it's negative 3 on up. This one, we're going to be at 2, 4. Again, my axis of symmetry is always, it's, uh, the axis of symmetry has to pass through the vertex. So I'm always going to pass through that. Um, so it's always going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex. In this case, the y-intercept is 0, 0. Again, the domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. There's no restrictions on squaring numbers. That's why we have all real numbers. It goes forever to the left, forever to the right. And then I start at negative infinity, and I come up to 4, and I stop. Again, we have a minimum over here and a maximum over there. Take a second, fill all those things in. Maybe hit pause. And then we get uh, vertex is at 3, 2. Axis of symmetry, x equals 3, comes right through there. Uh, y-intercept, ooh, I can't tell what the y-intercept is going to be for sure, can I? So that's that means we're going to need another, another way to do that. Negative infinity to infinity, and then I got 2 to infinity. Um, notice the range will always be deal with the y-coordinate. This guy over here, the vertex, negative 2, 2. And then um, axis of symmetry is going to be... Uh, x equals negative 2, y-intercept is at 0, negative 2, right here, right? Here's my axis, very good. Domain, all real numbers, and range goes from negative infinity up to positive 
2. Okay, so we're going to need to deal with this. Now, we do know that we go 1 over, and then we go um, uh, 1 over, 1 up, 1 over, 3 up. It would be 1 over and then 5 up, okay? But we're going to have to have a better way to do that. It is 11 because that pattern does hold. Um, but uh, we're going to need to know the equation. And once we know the equation, we can find the uh, y-intercept pretty easily. Okay, finding the line of symmetry. This is going to be the big thing. All right, because of this symmetry, we are going to use this equation. And this is going to give you the axis of symmetry, which is also the x-coordinate of the vertex. And that's going to get you going for graphing and finding all of the important information. So this is the axis of symmetry. And it's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. And because we have an axis of symmetry, we are equidistant from the axis of symmetry here and here. Okay, I know that A is positive, and since A is positive, I know I am going to open up, and I will have a minimum. There will be a minimum. So the axis of symmetry you're always going to find by doing, so again, I have A is 1, B is 4, C is 1. So I'm coming off of my, I'm, I'm using this, right? And my axis of symmetry is X equals negative b over 2a. And that's really what you got to understand you're going to use for all of these. That's the formula for the, for the axis of symmetry. So I get x equals negative 2. So I go over here and I get negative 2. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to figure out what is the vertex. Well, that means I'm just going to do f of negative 2. Because I want to know what is the corresponding y value that goes with the x value of negative 2. So we're just going to plug it in, and it's going to be great. Now, some of you need to make sure that you understand how to square a negative number in your calculator. Okay, This is negative 4 plus 1. This is negative 3. I get negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go right there with it. I'm going to change colors because I can. There is my vertex. Now, my, uh, my y-intercept always occurs when x is 0. So really, I'm finding f of 0, which means I have 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 1. Wait a second. That means that if my y-intercept is always going to be is always when x is 0, the value of c, this will always be 0 and c. So this is 0 and 1. Isn't that going to be great? So you can tell as long as you're in standard form, you have the y-intercept. Now, I'm my y-intercept is 2 away. I use the y-intercept whenever I can. I'm 2 away here. That means I'm 2 away there. Uh, I, I say down here, do we need another point? And I could find another point. I'm going to find, I'm going to do f of 1, and I'm going to get a different color because I can. And I'm going to do f of 1 because if I can find 1, so I'm going to have 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 1. That's 1 plus 4 plus 1, that's 6. So I get another point. But every time you get one point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Every time you get one point, you get two points because I'm three away from the axis of symmetry. Symmetry cuts it in half, one, two, three away, and there is my graph. So now I can graph this thing. Oh, I'm using the green color that I never should use. Life goes on. And it looks something like that. And that's a pretty good sketch. So the really the main thing here is you're doing the negative b over 2a, and then I plug that number in. That gives me the vertex. This was the value of c. I used symmetry. If you need to find one more point, every time you, want, you find one point on here, you get two. That's the beauty of it. Let's try another one. Okay. I already can tell that this one is going to open down and have a maximum. 
this will open down and have a maximum because A is negative. You can already tell. Axis of symmetry is negative B over 2A. Holy cow, that's a lot of negative signs. If you have three negative signs, a negative times a negative is a positive divided by a negative, I will end up with negative 1. Okay, be careful of that. Next, for the vertices, so I'm going to go, I'm going to graph negative 1 here. I'm coming down. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug f of negative 1 in there. Negative, negative 1 squared. That negative is outside. This is the value of x. Minus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. This is really negative 1 plus 2 plus 2. So 4 minus 1 is 3. So I get negative 1, positive 3. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3. That's my vertex. The y-intercept, we said, is always just going to be, whoops, 0, 2. It's the value of c. 0 minus 0 plus 2. I've, if I'm one unit away, I'm one unit away. This is, another, this is a really good idea to find another point. Again, I would find, I would use 1 in this case because I can't really get the shape just on those three dots. So I'm going to put a 1 in there. Really got to watch the negative signs here, people. Neg this is outside. This is outside. This was inside. That was different. Negative, 1 squared is 1, minus 2 plus 2. And I get, uh, that goes away. It's, it's negative 1. So it's, it, another point is 1, negative 1. But remember, 1, negative 1, that's 2 away and 2 away. And now I have what I need. To graph it. It's rounded. It's not a V. Do the best you can. And we have a maximum. The maximum occurs at the vertex, which was negative 1, 3. Yeah, this is good stuff. Okay, so here we go again. And again, this is just worded slightly different. And this one says, determine whether we have a maximum or a minimum. A is positive. If A is positive, then we open up, right? Which means we have a minimum value. Axis of symmetry, x is negative b over 2a, which is negative 1. x equals negative 1. Vertex, plug it in. f of negative 1 is 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 minus 2. This is 3 minus 6 minus 2. 3 minus 6 minus 2. That's negative 8 and positive 3. That's negative 5. I get a vertex of negative 1, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5 is right here. Y-intercept is negative 2. So I'm going to put my... I don't know why that... Oh, this is a, an image. It's not a picture. It's poorly made. PowerPoint is what it is. Don't judge me. Um, negative 2 is right here. 1 away, 1 away. Again, I would... So my Y-intercept was 0, negative 2. Again, I would find F of... 1 again, I mean, it just kind of keeps, I mean, it's the easiest math to use 1 whenever we can. So I get 3 plus 6 minus 2 is 9 minus 2 is 7. I get 1, 7. So this one's really skinny, and I'm 2 away and 2 away. And why is it so skinny? Because of the, oh, that 3, that's the same A that we had in transformations. You remember that? Back in transformations, if the value of A was... Um, positive we had a vertical stretch so this is all kind of coming together yes it is and we'll be finding that h and k down the line that's a few days away though all right so a lot of algebra here hey axis of symmetry i would encourage you to hit pause and do this one on your own after you hit pause and do this one on your own then you'll be able to uh, see if you check your work with what i do got to have a maximum because a is negative Okay, axis of symmetry. X equals negative B over 2A. Again, there's three negative signs. It's got to be negative, and it's 8 over 4, which is 2. X equals negative 2. Boy, I got a lot of negatives. You will get positives from time to time. It's okay. Uh, vertex we find by doing F of negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 minus 2. Ooh, going to need a calculator. Let's see if I can figure this out. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8, plus 16, minus 2 is 6. I got negative 2 
6 for the vertex, y-intercept negative 2, 6 for the vertex, y-intercept is at 0, negative 2, symmetry tells me 2 away, 2 away. Ooh, that, that seems pretty tall and thin. Uh, it is opening down, which is good, but I'm a little bit concerned about what we have here. You know, I think we're all right. I think we're good. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find 1 again, and this is going to be quite a ways down as well. And I'm going to get negative 2 minus 8 minus 2 is negative 12. I'm not even going to be able to find that. It's going to be so far down. I could do negative 1 and figure out which one is in between there. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1 minus 2. That's negative 2 positive. That's going to be um, negative. No. Positive 4. Positive 4. Yeah. That sounds better. One away, one away. Now I have something that looks like this. Yeah, good. All right. So the moral of the story here, it says here's your homework, and this is on your sheet, and there's a answer sheet with some graphs on it that I have for you. But use the negative b over 2a. It'll say make a table of values in the homework. Don't make a table of values. Use the negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Then you plug that value in to find the vertex, and then you have y-intercept is 0c. Then you can sketch the graph, and you can do it. All right. Have a great day.